that was um, a couple of weeks before my birthday, sort of the operational needs, the personnel issues that were coming up, the PPE needs. You know, at some point you were just saying like, I don't know if I can do it all and, and, and really felt almost had a panic attack out if I can be up front. You know, heart racing, kind of sweaty. Really took some time, a few minutes before my, my meeting to walk outside and get some fresh air. What's the reality? What are the things I could control? And it was important for me to show up to that Zoom call with all my staff. It's okay to not be okay sometimes, to say I'm kind of struggling, and then give the other other people the opportunity to reach out to you and say, well, how can I help you? And also give, I think, permission to my staff to say, I can take a break for a minute. Forty percent of our staff have been disaster workers. So in addition to their caseloads, a lot of them are going to motel sites, staffing our motels, doing food delivery and meal delivery, dealing with what's happening in the community because of um, what people are bringing up, anxiety, depression, fear, and worry about, am I going to transmit, if I have something, because I'm asymptomatic, to the, pe to the people I'm seeing? Or when I come home, we've had to remind staff to really take care of themselves and their families. Also, to remain connected, but first and foremost, with people uh, that have feelings uh, that need each other. So we have been fortunate to be able to shift a lot of our work via telehealth. How do you engage people when you actually aren't there in their spaces? Who are the linkages in the community that will do a much better job linking with those community members? Faith-based communities, our businesses, hair salons, barber shops. Like what can we do to do sort of our outreach a little bit differently? The effects of what sort of is happening is felt in many levels, uh, and our staff that are hearing it from the clients of how they're really responding, the anxiety and the the, the pain, the trauma of being re-traumatized again. The staff who identify in many of those communities, um, either directly or indirectly, we're trying to address that and being strong about our message that we are against racial injustice. We're very fortunate that the County of Marin has some leaders in the equity field that really are beginning conversations. But more important than the conversation is really thinking about concrete steps that we can do, ensuring you know language access, ensuring that the folks that are marginalized really have these resources from the ground so that they can get services, for example. It's really our role as leaders to think about how, do, how can we be change agents in addressing those issues. So as someone who identifies as part of the LGBTQ community, of really understanding the parallel process to that. And what's our stance against um, those injustices? Leadership is really being true to yourself. But I want to be a leader that really tries to understand where people are coming from. And also be authentic, that to really role model that, you know, we are not perfect and we can't be perfect in a crisis. But we are hopeful and going to do our best we can to really reach out to people when we need it. That vulnerability is part of really what leadership is about.